So. Okay, I'm going to call the meeting to order at 6 o'clock. Um, welcome. I'd like to welcome everybody that is, that is, is viewing online right now. This is the first for Oakdale. We're, we're meeting here live. Folks can come and watch, but we're also going to start videotaping all of our board meetings. So I think that adds an extra element and we can have better outreach. People can see what's going on at the Board of Education level for uh, Oakdale. Um, so it's something that we're going to continue to do even after we get through our episode here. I think it's going to be good for um, our school. Um, with that said, I'd like to welcome it. I'd like to welcome everybody. And since this is the first time, I, I might say we, we may have some technical difficulties as we go through this for the first time. So please bear with us. We're going to do our best. Um, we're going to move on to uh, our agenda item number three, and that is um, to uh, discuss and consider and accept the resignation of Evan Limley um, from seat one effective today. Um, Evan's going to has submitted his resignation, and um, we are grateful for his services. and And before he does do that, I'm gonna we're gonna present him with a uh, certificate of appreciation. So, on behalf of the Board of Education, this reads: Presented to Evan Lindley for your selfless service as a Board of Education member for Oakdale Public School District 29. Your hard work, your counsel, and your leadership during your term as an elected office holder have left an indelible impact on the educational experience and environment for the students, staff, and community of Oakdale. Thank you. Robert T. Corbin, President of Oakdale Board of Education. I'm going to shake your hand. Okay. 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 and convey to Dr. Pierce and Jerome and everybody here just how much you've meant to me and what you've done and what you've done for the district in educating our students. So your perspective from higher education has translated down to the secondary level and I think it's made us a stronger school. I hate to see you leave. Thank you. Thank you. Jerome, anything? Uh, no, I'll just add that uh, your uh, involvement in the selection of Dr. Pierce and your uh, uh, your leadership through that uh, that process in, process in particular was absolutely exemplary. I don't think we would be where we are uh, without your participation in that. And it uh, meant the world to Oakdale going forward, and I think that the evidence is sitting on the front row right there. Uh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, Mr. President, point of order, if I may. Yes, sir. Uh, it seems that since we're recording this, and we're certainly in, uncert, uh, in uncharted territory, yes. And for posterity, maybe we could characterize what is happening at this point in history, such that at some point, 50 years from now, when someone is watching this first recording, they will have some context on what is happening in the world. Well. I'm going to turn that to you because no, no one can explain what's happening in the world better than Secretary Bell. They both wrong. Perhaps I'll do that very briefly. Okay. Thank so, you. Uh, families who are watching, uh, maybe students in the future, um, we sit here on the 14th of April in 2020 uh, in the middle of the first global pandemic to hit the United States uh, in about a century. Uh, regrettably, uh, as of today, we have about 2,000 people uh, who have tested positive in the state for a novel coronavirus that we call COVID-19. Uh, also, regrettably, we've had just over 100 deaths uh, in our state, uh, 108 as, uh, as of noon today. Um, but we sit here distant, uh, one from another, uh, and there are a couple of folks also uh, in the seats here, uh, and we're observing social distancing, which uh, helps to stem the transmission of this uh, virus. If you're watching at home, uh, it's my obligation to encourage you to continue to do that even though you're tired of it, uh, and even though you're stir crazy uh, from the better part of the semester spent locked behind the doors with your family, uh, this public service announcement is to encourage you to continue doing that. 
Uh, we believe a surge in our state will come sometime in the next seven to 10 days. And it's incumbent on all of us to continue to practice both this social distancing and uh, ardent uh, personal hygiene as we make our way through this. Then we'll get through this uh, and get on about our business in the summer. But for right now, uh, the context is important, I think, for, for folks to know. Uh, we appreciate what you've done at Oakdale. We appreciate Oakdale's leadership uh, in dealing with this unprecedented crisis. I would say our response as a school has also been, a, been unprecedented and will be stronger for it. Thank you, Gerald. So with that, do I have a motion to accept uh, Evan Lindley's resignation from seat one? So moved with regrets. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, Evan. So with that, um, because of this unprecedented ep epidemic, it's put us in a position um, because elections have, have been pushed back. Um, we have to, um, we are forced to seat our um, board member elect Aaron Halsey, and she would be seated until our board meeting in July. Um, so our workaround for that is that we're going to appoint her now to finish out um, Evan's term for the next two months, and then during after uh, the June thirtieth elections are certified, our first board meeting in July. Aaron will probably be the first in history the Hopefield Board of Education to be sworn in twice. Um, within 60 days. So that's what we're going to do. So um, with that, um, may I have, uh, Aaron, you want to come up here and uh, stand on this side of the table and we'll uh, administer this oath and we'll make it official and we can get started. So yeah, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I Aaron Halsey. I Aaron Halsey. Hereby declare under oath. Hereby declare under oath. That I will faithfully, faithfully perform. That I will faithfully perform. The duties of school board member. That I will perform the, the duties of, of the school board, board member of Oakdale School District. Of Oakdale School District. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. All of the duties pertaining. All of the duties pertaining to set office. To set office. And obey the Constitution. And obey the Constitution. And the laws of the United States and Oklahoma. And the laws of the United States and Oklahoma. Congratulations. Welcome to the Oakdale Board of Education. You know, that'll get easier the second time. Right. <laughs> and then we'll sign up here and date. All right. Well, welcome, welcome to the board. We're grateful to have you. And, you're, uh, you know, I will, I will also say that, hop on Jerome's comments. How crucial Evan was to the selection of Dr. Pierce. Aaron, you performed that role as um, a past president of the foundation. Um, so you gave us incredible insight from that perspective. And now you're going to be able to parlay that insight and build upon that relationship and that process with Dr. Pierce as we go forward. So I think it's great to have you on board officially now. So welcome. Okay. We have all that admin set aside, so we're going to go right to public comment. Um, do we have any public comment? No, we don't have any public comment. So we'll go to uh, the consent agenda number six. And with that, do we have um, any questions on our consent agenda items? No. None? None? Okay. And then I'd ask for a motion to, um, to approve. So moved. Aye. Okay. All in favor? Aye. I'm still learning. That's okay. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and I, okay, great. Um,
That moves us to um, 6.3. Uh, you know what, Steve? I, I, uh, I fouled up. It's okay, you approved it, so uh, if you'd like me to discuss it again. I mean, do, do you, you know, is there any, any important pieces no, that we need to be aware of? We're certainly uh, under collecting a little bit, uh, probably to the tune of about 150,000. I think we'll continue to under collect, obviously, with the child nutrition services not operating. Um, we lose money on child nutrition anyway, so it's not like that's, that's going to be a huge loss to not have the revenue or have the expense either. Uh, but we do have cash balance uh, in the general fund, or $2,217,558. Uh, that compares to two million four hundred seven thousand this time last year. Uh, the building fund we have a little over two hundred thousand uh, compared to one hundred seventy eight thousand three twenty nine last year on page three. You have that report in front of you. Oh, not a hammer top. Um. And uh, we still have uh, 692000 in the bond fund and uh, $3.4 million in the sinking fund. The, uh, uh, for a cash balance of $6,521,944, that compares to almost $9 million this time last year, but we had significantly more in the bond funds at this, at this time last year. Um, that's really all. If you move back to page five, it's the expenditure comparisons uh, for the last three fiscal years. And you can see on the right side under FY20, the, our payroll expenditures for the month were a little bit higher uh, than this time last year. And also our, our non-payroll expenses were about twice as high. I can't really attribute that to Anything specific, except for maybe timing on uh, child nutrition expenditures at the beginning of, of the month last month. Um, but uh, overall, if you look at the uh, uh, comparisons from for non payroll expenditures from this year to last year, uh, you know we're still trending uh, about uh, twenty eight thousand dollars less. So uh, we're, we're certainly in good shape there. The next page is just the kind of a working budget that we have. Uh, and it uh, originally was just created to kind of develop something by option code to show where we're spending funds and, and also help you to project a carryover. And so right now, depending upon collections, um, you know, I'm still in the 850, 900 range. Uh, but I'll have a much better idea when we get through the end of this month. I anticipate that some people may be held back on paying their taxes in light of the current situation. I think those will flow through this month and, and we'll be back uh, probably in, in good shape. Any other questions on any of this? I, I don't have any questions. No, I'm here. Okay, so we're going to move on to um, agenda item seven business, and we'll go to the superintendent's report. Dr. Pierce. Well, good evening. Good evening. A couple of things I wanted to bring to your attention. One, obviously, we'll talk about a little bit in the, uh, the next portion with the principal's reports. They're not here, but they did make a little slideshow with some things about our distance learning plan. Um, all the feedback that I have received from parents and teachers is it's going real well, as well as can be expected, I'll put it that way. Um, the teachers have worked so hard and been so diligent to maintain connections as well as maintain curriculum flow and learning. And I think the parents have been on board with that too. Um, it's going to be a few more weeks to hang in there and to stay tough, but I think uh, that we're beginning a list of takeaways. Uh, I told staff the other day that uh, we should not waste any good crisis. Churchill was attributed to that, but it really wasn't Churchill. But uh, 
we're starting to have a list of things that we think that we can learn from this experience so that we can capture those and begin to implement those maybe even to next year when things are hopefully back to normal. So the feedback has been good. The new normal won't be normal. I don't think going forward we've had We've been pulled and stretched in some ways with technology and some things that I think have been good for us as well. So uh, we'll flex our muscles a little bit with that, and I think uh, that will be positive moving forward. I also attached for you to review the SDE waivers and assurances document that I filled out to submit to the state so they would approve our distance learning plan. It was, it was very uh, benign. It was just a matter of agreeing to a multitude of things that they were just we would normally probably agree to for the most part anyway, but they're in there if you have any questions. And then there's also an attachment for the Families First Coronavirus Response Act. It was just the FAQ created by the School Boards Association. It offers some additional protection to our employees as well. So should they have a son or a daughter or a relative that they're having to care for if they were ill, provides them with some extra assurance about, about being employed and having uh, sick leave protection as well. We are doing well, I think, with our Wi-Fi coverage across the district. We've had a few pockets where we knew that there was a weak signals. Those folks have reached out to us, and Mike France has been very good about going out to uh, work with uh, some internet providers to go out to those areas to make sure that they are working, even physically going himself to see if he can log on right there, too. And sometimes it hasn't worked, so he's been back in contact with them to make sure that our families do have the right access and accessibility that they, uh, they require. As you know, tomorrow we begin serving free lunch at Oakdale, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And I think uh, that will be very valuable to many of our families. And um, I think even some of our other families that normally would not participate in a program like that might find it valuable as well. And so we're looking forward to see how that works for, for them. And, if we have a high participation, we have the ability to expand the waiver that we receive so that we could do breakfast or we could do breakfast and lunch or we could add more days. Um, there's healthy snacks items. We're approved through, I believe, May, the end of May, but we can then reapply and do a summer feeding program as well if we needed to do that. But we have not submitted that yet. We want to see how this went. We wanted to start small, walk first before we run. And so we didn't want to start something and have to pull back in. We wanted to start and see the response. So that starts tomorrow. It's a grab and go. We have two serving locations, one here at the school in the parking lot and one at uh, this on the service road on I-35. So that we'll have a, we have a bus driver that will be over there at a, before, the, this, before the time starts for this group over here, the bus will go and they will begin delivering grab and go sack lunches over there. Families can pick up two days worth of meals at a time. One of the other changes in the waiver is that families do not have to have their children present with them in the car. They can just say, I have three kids and they can give them get up to six lunches to take home and then they come back then the following meal serving day. Um, we still are continuing with the Oakdale uh, food pantry items. We still have some things there that we assist the families with and we have some volunteers that are still delivering food items to some families that we know that are in need, so that continues as well. Pre-K enrollment happened, and we are full at pre-K. We have a waiting list, our morning section filled, our afternoon section is nearly full, and there is a waiting list for, for morning, I'm sorry, for morning, which some of those folks I would anticipate may switch to afternoon if they, there's space available, but they preferred morning, but that's been good. Um, the other thing happening right now is that I have a series of three letters that I've been sending out. One, the first letter is to all of our teachers that are on temporary contracts, thanking them for their service that the temporary contract does technically expire on the last day of their contract. However, if they wish to remain employed or to continue service at Oakdale to see their principal so that their principal could recommend them. And next month, I hope to have a list for you of all of those names who is returning and present that to you for your vote. Another letter that I also circulated was to our support personnel so that they have reassurance based on the governor's recent orders that they can continue being paid and that uh, we are surveying their interest on returning as well. So that will, that's, we're getting that it was due today. Phyllis 
re working remotely. I don't know. I think she has most of those, but we'll check that tomorrow. The last letter that I'm circulating soon, hasn't gone out yet, is to all of our teachers, certified teachers and staff that are on recurring contracts. Just asking them about their intent to return and so that we can then submit a letter to them, having asking them to commit to us and that we commit to uh, the intent is to hire them for next school year so that we uh, we also realize that sometimes school districts start uh, uh, with the teacher shortage and things like that. They begin hiring and getting people locked into contracts. This isn't a contract. However, it is a statement saying that they wish to be employed with us and that we have reasonable assurance that that would happen. So that way we can kind of know our, where our staffing needs are for next year. And with that, I'll conclude my report. I just want to tell the board, um, and Dr. Pierce, I want you to hear this. <laughs> For a superintendent to begin a new job <laughs> with the scenarios and circumstances that he has found himself to be in, in probably the first, what, 35 days, 30 days of employment, um, and my role as Board of Education President and the relationship and our working relationship and how that has um, proceeded is incredible. For someone not to have been part of Oakdale to come in green, to face what we're facing, establish everything that needed to be established. It's like I've known Joe Pierce my whole life and I've known Joe Pierce since, what, December 7th? The day that did not live in infamy for <laughs> Oakdale Public Schools. So I, I, I just, it, the transition has been so easy, and that is a credit to your leadership. It's a credit to your personality. Um, it's a credit to how you are as a man. Thank you. Uh, and I just want you to know that I would not expect it to be so smooth with 90% of folks that are in this business. And you are in that, you're definitely in the top 10. I, man, I, I'd argue higher than that. Thank you. So thank you for everything you've done and the manner in which you've done it because it's been an ease. And it's just been very enlightening. <laughs> and I've enjoyed it. <laughs> thank you. Very, very yeah, not any different. He thinks this is how it always is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Always an offended. I don't know what I don't know. Yeah. You're here, yeah. Yeah. but it, it, I, and I got to tell you, I, I love this camera because it allow it may allow more people to hear exactly what we're experiencing that we typically otherwise wouldn't be able to articulate unless it was just you know twenty or thirty people or ten up here in the audience. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, so operations, elementary, middle school. Are we just going to turn to? here and, and watch the video. Okay. Andy? Yeah. Okay. I can't hear very good. So. Uh, I won't tell them you were asleep. <laughs> this is a slideshow prepared by Jenna and Jill to uh, let us know what's going on with our distance learning. And it has, uh, there's a video embedded here that some students created, some photos, things that students have turned in that creative projects that they've been working on, um, so forth. So if we can, I'll kind of hit the highlights as we go through since they are not here. So every morning at 8.45 on our Instagram account, didn't know if you know we have an Instagram account. We do now. And it is where we do our morning announcements. It's a sense of continuity, I believe, for our students. Uh, there's a number of people that join. There's, it's not overwhelming amount of folks. However, um, it does give some kids a sense of normalcy as well as um, being able to connect with their principal and have some of the common things that they would normally hear every day at school if they were here. Andy. For elementary school, here are some things that Jenna has collected about things that teachers have said about the past couple of weeks. Um, I'm not going to read those to you. You can uh, kind of skim through those. Um, I have to give an extreme amount of kudos to our principals who have embraced this 
and have diligently uh, communicated with their staffs effectively and with care as well. I'm very, very pleased with those. So here's some interesting things some of our teachers put together. They had some messages for their students. You've seen the top photo. And it looks like in the bottom is probably a class meeting, just a snapshot of what that looks like uh, when the kids get connected. And uh, our teachers really have gone above and beyond to make their students feel uh, supported socially, emotionally, and cared for. The curriculum for elementary, I've been so pleased with this because it is plenty of information. And if we do not expect parents to be home school educators by any means, but we want learning to continue. So I think this plan offers a breadth of activities and experiences that students can continue with learning. And the elementary teachers have done a good job of prioritizing what those skills are. And then if the essentials are met, then they have choice boards so that there are extension application enrichment type activities for those students that wish to do that as well. We've also suggested that for some students that may be accelerated, if they're a second grader, we'll click on the third grade choice board and start doing some third grade work. So it's an interesting way of differentiating for our students, but I'm very pleased with that level of work as well. This is a parent comment, I believe. Interesting background of the uh, briefing here. Yes, I thought that was interesting. It wasn't like, <laughs> for a second, I would really appreciate that. <laughs> yes. I got visual fatigue. <laughs> okay, Andy. So for middle school, it looks like there's a link. I don't know that we need to go there, Andy. I think they probably, these are all parents. They probably have seen the, the Google site. Uh, what we did was do it real quick. We built a Google site. Thank you, Andy Boatman, for taking care of that for us. He's running the slides, but he was the brains behind making this all happen. So it's a just a Google site, a link that's embedded to our main website that gives the teachers immediate ways to be able to access and change and add and delete and correct and things like that on the dime through our Google Classroom format. So praise for teachers. Um, they are hooked up with Zoom. Uh, twice a week, the Zoom meetings are optional. There are uh, the time for them to be available for parents and teachers. I mean, I'm sorry, for parents and students to be able to ask questions and get uh, immediate results and feedback. One of the things when we began this process was the question: Well, do we grade activities? What kind of grades do we give? How do we assess these things? And my direction to the team was: I was more concerned about feedback than I was grades that I believe if a teacher wants something to be completed, they owe feedback to that child on their uh, level of achievement or suggested improvements, whatever that may be. So they are offering feedback. Some are more traditional grades, yes, and some are just more comments or checklists and things like that. Utilizing technology. Some of these things I've never even heard of until we started getting, you know, new study islands, new IXL, and some of these other things. Man, we pulled stuff out of the woodwork. So we have lots of things and resources for kids and students to do, all free to us. OK, big things are happening. This is the link that uh, we wanted you to see what some of our kiddos are doing.
不不少听人听说，把拉拉斯哈斯哈斯说的，就是低保级的火药精。So, I was very impressed, and I was excited to think that.、Um, I mean, just look at the vocabulary in that. The academic vocabulary was rich there, and in such a creative means that、uh, this is an opportunity, probably minus coro-、uh, coronavirus, they wouldn't have been able to do maybe, or wouldn't have had to do. But they had the time, the willpower to do that. We also have a book club going on. So,、uh, Mrs. Jones has been doing that, but now she's doing it virtually. <clears throat> some examples. There are some. I don't know what it's for. A challenge for science Olympiad. Pringles.、Uh, I, the best I could have done was maybe make the duck bill out of those. I don't know that. <laughs> That's impressive.、Uh, still doing some penmanship in the digital world, she says.、Uh, now, this may be a question you would receive. Here's the the nitty gritty on grading. We left teacher ease open for fourth quarter. Third quarter we did right before break, spring break. So that we had a third quarter grade, but we left teacher ease open so that teachers could input feedback, assessments, grades, whatever they put into that. However, with the caveat that no student's grade could be less than their end of third quarter grade. It could improve as they so the fourth quarter grades will be average, and then they're combined with the third quarter grade. I understand. And it would not be less than the third quarter grade. So it can't. It's kind of whole harmless. You can't do worse, but you could do better. Some of the parents I was on a Zoom meeting the other night with some parents, and they said, "How do I motivate my child? They've got decent grades, great grades. They don't. Why do they need to do this?" And I said, "Well, I explained this. I said, you know, really, it's about grades and often mask learning. And this is about learning. This isn't about grades. We already got our grades into the year, but we want to continue learning and be ready for next year." So hopefully that that will I mean sound makes sense to me. But I don't know if I'm fourteen. I think a lot of sense. But hopefully that would help a little bit as well. Some other praise from parents.、Um, a parent of four. I've never heard of this word. Okedalians.、Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You are one. <laughs> yes. And Mrs. Foster and Mrs. Wilhoy also have weekly Zoom meetings with parents, five o'clock on Fridays, so that they can.、Um, you want to join in? I joined it one last Friday for Dreams and Giggles, and it was、uh, about fifty or so parents were there to ask questions and get assistance. And Andy, in the last thing, a few takeaways that I thought of. Andy, can you hit click? There we go.、Um, Some things I've noticed in the last seven to ten days: aligned communication and the outlets have become more streamlined. It's not perfect yet; we still need to fine-tune that. But I believe that we're aligned better with that. Our team collaboration has increased, and it's consistent. I've been pleased with the curriculum differentiation that I've seen, which you saw some of it tonight. The choices, the extension, and adventure activities. Technology skills have been stretched. For staff and students, I believe. I would add parents to that.、Too. I'm sorry, what? I would add parents to that too. Yes, yes. Parents' <laughs> technology skills have also probably been stretched. We also know have a greater degree of understanding of our technology needs moving forward, as well as some opportunities to capture for next year. It's given us some time also with me with some of the administrators to work on some leadership development. We've also learned to add. We've added some additional internet safeguards in place. I have personally made phone calls to I think three or four parents,、um, asking them to have conversations with their children and about places they're visiting on the internet at times that they may not even know that that was happening. And then、um, we're continuing with our cleaning routines and our staffing. We're reviewing that as well as we go into summertime. 
And then um, just the parent support, which is always strong. It just always, they appreciate our teachers, but it's even been very evident, very, very evident. They really do appreciate all teachers doing so. That's the last slide of that. Okay, yeah. thank you. I love that. Yeah. With, with my comments about Dr. Pierce, if Mrs. Will Hoyt and Mrs. Foster were here. Thank you. Thank oh, you. Mrs. Will Hoyt might be there. Maybe Mrs. Foster was there. Well, I, I want to pass along a comment as a parent and board member. The, the distance learning plan that they came up with for both the elementary and middle school level to me is incredible. It's very simplistic. It's easy to follow, comprehensive. Um, I think after the first few days, I mean, parents and families were able to get into some their routine. Right. It's not a school routine, it's their routine. Right. Um, that's the difference in this whole thing. But whatever you all did in uh, about six or seven work days to come up with the simplicity of the curriculum, being able to follow and breaking it down by day and breaking it down by assignment, it was incredible. Uh, I, I, I just think they've done a tremendous job in putting that together for us and for our kids. And with that, I would love to challenge both those principals to think about the future, about how that can translate into something more. It may be something permanent to be able to utilize things that if a kid can't take PE or a certain special because we don't have the room, so, hey, the opportunities that this thing is opening up for Oakdale are huge, and it's making me less scared to think about those opportunities because of that. I think parents are going to feel the same. They're going to have the same feelings, I think, about what we could actually do implementing six facility education. And I won't call it distance learning after this crisis is over, but a different kind of educational experience for our students here. I mean, I can see it. I, I can start to see it. Right? And I'm going to, you need to challenge them to, to deliver if we need that. Great job. Mm -hmm. Okay, great reports. Um, we'll move on to um, 7.2. And that is the, the discussion and scheduling board work sessions for our long term vision and strategy planning, including. Um, important future bond issues. I add the important part because it's something that we are going to need to get together as a board team with Dr. Pierce and everyone that is involved in that to really talk about what's next because um, we need to be thinking about what's next and then we need to be thinking about what's next next. We'll need some help with that, um, but I think we need to get together as a group first and sort of just brainstorm some ideas before we, you know, elicit others to say, okay, well, what do you think? Make a plan. I think we need a strong plan. So, Dr. Pierce and I have talked a little bit about what that might look like. Um, and so, we need to talk to the board about what you think it might look like so that we can come together and say, hey, let's get together. We can plan a few special meetings, we can plan a few executive sessions, and we can kind of talk about those things and brainstorm. So what are your thoughts on that? I totally agree. I'd love to hear what, where everybody stands sure. on what that looks like. Um, are we going to hire someone from the OSSDA to come help us? I mean, what does that look like? And I thought it's going to be very helpful. Um, what are your thoughts on time? And when and what is the best time to do it? Because we, those are the things that we're going to have to set set down in stone. And I, what I don't want to get lost in, in the shuffle is there are there are some really short term things that we could be doing right now. There are some near term planning things that we could be doing. You know, a few months down the road, and then there's some long term things that I think encompass a huge strategic plan that I think we're all kind of sort of it's at the tip of our pencils of really wanting to do. But 
talking about our short-term goals. What does that look like as far as scheduling? Being it's April right now. I'm flexible, so I think we're on. I'll be flexible. <laughs> Is it something that we want to set down before our next board meeting, or do we want to do we want to push it until maybe after May 14th and, and, and before we get together at that point and take a look? I mean, what, what are the risks of that? Dr. Pierce and I talked about our next bond and what that may look like as far as infrastructure, what we need, what we need to finish as far as loop road and, you know, our fire suppression system and how does that affect a couple other secondary and tertiary things when that happens? Um, our next, because of the election cycle, our next bond would be in could be in on, on the June 30th primary, but we talked and we just feel that would be way too soon to try to come up and here's what we want to do and then try to be able to articulate that to the community and our the taxpayer to say, hey, this is what we think should be done next in the school. Um, I also think there's just a general, there's, we're starting to be in a general sense of uh, economic uncertainty. Yes. But I think it's right around right, 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 a bad time for home in the community for dollars. I think we should, even if we could, I think we should hold off. Okay. And we are, we are going to be able to, we're going to be great to do that. We're in such a wonderful position here in Oakdale as far as what our bonding capacity is going to be, especially after July 1st, it's going to be tremendous because there's a huge pain that we're going to make. Yeah. Um, and it may be good for us to spend the summer talking about what's next and coming up with that plan and being able to come back into the fall and say, here's what we've sort of done through a sort of a, a balanced approach to get where we think we need to be. If we have the time to wait and do that after May 14th, I think that's great. Okay. Does that sound good to us? I think, I don't know about everyone else, but I suspect most of our summer plans are a bit disrupted. Sure, we have. I'll have a lot more flexibility in the uh, <laughs> right. May 14th meeting, but we could maybe at the May 14th meeting set out a time uh, and maybe capture even a couple of such okay. At that meeting, here's what I'll do. I, I will kind of put together maybe a tentative sort of um, working group planning sessions that we can have prepared and get some dates and just recommended dates, and then we can just go down to yeah, that works. No, that doesn't work. Hey, this day works, and then we can get it on the calendar and say, hey, this is this time, place, and date. This is what we're going to do. That's some. And those will be. Will those take the form of executive session? I, I, I think they're going to take the form of maybe some special sessions in conjunction with executive sessions. I I need to make sure that our language is right about what we're doing because we'll, it's going to be twofold. It's also going to be a um, a superintendent sort of our opportunity to go through our evaluation of him because we haven't started that yet. So encompassing that whole evaluation of the new superintendent and where what goals we're going to give that superintendent to carry out for the district, those will be under the executive session auspice, and I think that's how we'll kind of work through that. When we bring in, um, I see us bringing in some architects and some of our planners to come in and talk to us. And I think on those sessions, there'll be more special sessions, you know, probably during the day when they can come in and, and speak to us and just kind of give us a general aspect or maybe give us a view of what, it's, what that may look like. Because I think we're going to have those specific questions that we'll want to see what we're going to do before we actually say, hey, this is what we want to do. Does that make sense, Dr. Pierce, to you? Yes. Okay. So we'll plan on that, get some days out. I mean, I, 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 I literally think it's probably three to five, you know, kind of maybe meetings over, over the next four months. And that way when we come back in September, yeah. August, we can have a real solid plan 
Um, and hopefully we're ginned up back to somewhat of a normal schedule and we can start pushing that plan out. Good? Awesome. Okay, yes. good. Um, okay, we'll go to uh, 7.3 and that's a discussion of possible action to rehire administrators effective July 1st, 2020 to June 30th, 2021. And that's our, that's uh, Mr. Franz, Mr. Mrs. Foster, and Mrs. Lovely. Dr. Pierce, do you have anything to add to that? No, I would recommend that we can be rehired. Okay. Um, do we, is it, do you all have any questions, any discussion? Is the Director of Operations I'm enthusiastically supportive of these three, but from a technical standpoint, Director of Operations, is that a, is that a new title or is that one that has been occupying or? It was one that I believe we discussed last month. I don't think you were maybe at that meeting. That would be why. I did a, give a job description like for the chart okay. and um, it's a new title. It's many of the same responsibilities that's been okay. carrying out. It just defines that lane a little bit more and uh, a need for the district. Sounds good. Any questions? Okay. Um, Mr. No? Jerome, any other questions? No. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve those, uh, to rehire the administrators? So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 No, well, like, like we've been doing it for years. We can all switch. We can have you on. First two. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're going to move on to 7.4, and that is um, consideration, discussion of possible action to amend the 2019-20 school calendar um, to end the year date to May 15th, which is a different end date than what originally uh, submitted. Um, I don't think there's anything to add. There's really nothing. It's a, we need a vote of something documented here because we do have to submit that to the state declaring when our last day of school is, et cetera. And it is different than what was previously approved. So okay. It's a formality. So a motion to approve that change? Motion to approve the All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to get the auditor on the phone. Okay. Um, actually, Amy Zimbach, Chief Representative of the Jerry Hartman. Okay. Chief Wade. Bye, Bye, Bye. Thank you. 